Welcome back to another episode of Black Hat Python. In this one, we are developing quite an interesting program here. This one will be able to brute force logins on uh, websites, so submitting uh, post forms, and in particular, a WordPress site. So we, this is going to be exclusively um, you know, reusable code for uh, brute forcing a the WP login on pretty much any WordPress site. And this is something that I went out and I created on my own. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show this code a little bit later. I actually, when I, when I built this code here, uh, my aim was to do the same thing. And this was before I even got to this section. So I did it a little bit differently than how they did it. And personally, I'll let you guys be the judge, but personally, I like um, my program better than the one they made in this uh, in the Black Hat Python book here. But I'll demo both of them to you, and um, I'll have my code on, on my GitHub page, uh, which the link for that is down in the description below if you want to get the source code for any of the, uh, any of the things you see here in the Black Hat Python series. I'll always provide uh, a link to the source code uh, through my GitHub, so check that out if you're interested. But as far as uh, this script here from Black Hat Python goes... Uh, this is going to be called WP Killer. That's what they chose to name it here. And um, they prefer to use LXML. Uh, I, I Personally, I find that um, Beautiful Soup is a little bit easier for me to work with. I don't know if it's just because I have more experience using it, perhaps. But um, I, I used uh, Beautiful Soup for mine. But we're going to be using LXML, which means that we need to get it into binary format so that uh, it can parse it. But uh, let's just start from the beginning, which is down here. And uh, basically what we're going to do is we are going to create an instance of this class. I believe that's the correct terminology for it, called B. And it's going to pass in the user name here. And I'm running this against a hack the box machine for demo purposes because their site um, is not accessible for me, the one they use in the example. So no, no big deal. We'll just use a... Uh, hack the box site that is running WordPress that we can brute force the login for. And uh, yeah, the target here. And these variables are set up the top, the target, um, the success message. So if we're able to successfully log in, what you'll notice on WordPress sites is there's usually some text somewhere in the page that says, welcome to WordPress. So we're going to be checking for that. Now, keep in mind, this is kind of the opposite of how Hydra checks. If you guys have run Hydra to brute force uh, web forms before, Hydra normally checks, I believe, for a failure condition. And uh, if that condition is not present, then it will assume that um, you were able to successfully log in. In this case, we're checking for the positive condition of like the presence of some text. Now, in my script, you'll see that I also decided to go for checking the failure condition. If that failure condition is not present, then I assume that it was successful. So... That's the little subtlety is there that yeah kind of make a little bit of a difference to how this thing runs, but um yeah yeah we'll, we'll look at that as time goes on here and we'll see that play out. So we have success target and word list. I I just have a word list here that I'm gonna run it against, but uh, yeah you can use whichever you prefer. And so once we create the instance of the class, we'll run the init. Uh, this this init function will get run here. And uh, we're just going to be setting the username and the URL. It's going to actually take in those parameters, right? We're passing them down here. Username, URL. And um, it's just going to print some text to the console saying that it's beginning the brute force attack and that it finished the setup. And it's going to be brute forcing a particular username, whatever you uh, pass in at the bottom there. And uh, yeah, once it does that, uh, it will call get words and uh, assign the output of it to uh, this global variable words here. So uh, get words is a function at the top here, which is going to take in your word list, whichever one you chose. You don't have to pass it in as a parameter because there's a global variable up here, so we can just, we can just use it. And uh, basically what it's going to do is it's going to read the entire file, the entire word list, and it's going to create the queue because we're going to be doing the multi-threading and um, so that's how we're going to set that up, initialize it. And 
what this does here, this raw words dot split, the dot split is a built in Python method that uh, takes words and for each word, it uh, adds that word as its own uh, entry in a list. So it builds a list out of all the words. So that's what we want to do, right? So a Python list, when I say list, I mean basically taking all the words in this raw words file in your word list and each one is its own item in the Python list. So it's going to take each item from that list and uh, add it to the words queue, okay? And we're going to return, once we're done with that, we're going to return the entire words queue, which will have all of the items, all the, um, I should say, all of the words in the word list uh, in the queue at that point. And that will be assigned to this words variable here. So this words variable is the queue of all of the uh, potential passwords from your list. And then we'll be calling the run function of uh, the class, uh, run brute force, passing in the words queue. So if you look here, the words queue now became passwords. And for this throwaway variable in range 10, so 10 times, we're just going to be multi-threaded to run uh, 10 threads in parallel. And so we're just um, initializing the thread, starting the thread. Now, the thread will be calling this uh, web brooder function here and we're passing in once again we're passing in the the queue of all the passwords right and so when we do that we're going to need to establish a session using request.session that way we can handle cookies because wordpress requires that uh you're able to store cookies so that's the reason for running that and then what we're calling response zero is just um doing uh, the get on the url right so we're making the get request. That way we can actually get the cookies that we need because you have to have the cookies initially in order to, to run this. So the only reason we're sending a get request there first is so that we can have the uh, the cookies that, it, that the server sets you up with upon first interacting with it. And then from that point, we want to grab the, the parameters. So because we're always dealing with WordPress, this is meant to be used on WordPress, we can, uh, the parameters are predictable enough that we can, uh, we can code we can build it in code that it, it should work on all the WordPress sites. So what we're going to be doing is just taking the uh, the content of uh, this response here. And the reason we do dot .content is, like I said at the beginning, we're using LXML. So we need this in a binary format. So dot .content will uh, return a the, the binary, the bytes format of this, right? I believe like a byte string. Uh, whereas dot text is what you would use for a uh, beautiful soup because you would want to, uh, use it with, uh, you, you would need it in a, in a string format for beautiful soup. So it's going to, uh, find this, uh, log parameter here and that's where, what it'll assign to the username. Um, so once it, uh, does that, it'll drop into this while loop, right? So as long as there are passwords from, you know, the initial building out the the words queue, right? As long as there's passwords left to uh, left in that queue and the correct password has not been found because we initialize self.found to false because when we first start it, we assume we don't know what the correct password is yet. Uh, as long as those conditions are, are, um, are the case, then we will sleep for five seconds. So we're going to make sure we're not hammering the server. We're going to uh, actually wait five seconds between uh, uh, trying the next batch of uh, passwords here. And we're going to do a uh, passwords.get. So the dot .get is part of the, the queue, part of the, the um, multi-threading. So whenever we have a queue, the way that we get uh, an item in the queue is we do the dot .get. So... Remember that passwords is actually the same thing here as words. We just changed the name when we passed it in uh, to the function, right? Right here and right here. So keep that in mind. So we're just getting the first item from the passwords queue, which is really the words queue. And uh, then we're printing out this text so that we know as the user of this script that, uh, okay, it's going to try this password against this username. And then uh, it's going to find the parameter called PWD. 
and it's going to assign the password to that and then uh, as a as a parameter right and then it's going to make the post request sending in the po the proper post data that we uh, established up here and that will be equal to response one and so each time it does that uh, it's going to be looking for the uh, presence of the string that says that it was successful right so that is success right that is the success variable remember if we just to refresh here welcome to wordpress exclamation point that is the actual uh, string that we're looking for in the response to determine whether we were successful or not so if it does see that uh, in the response one dot content dot decode because remember we're dealing with the byte string so we got to decode that uh, into uh, text so that we can determine like into a string to determine if that string exists in this string because if we didn't do this then it would be looking for a string in a in a, in a byte string and it wouldn't match up on the data type. So we got to make sure that if we're saying, hey, if this string is in this, we got to make sure that this is a string. So that's why we're doing the content.decode. And uh, yeah, if that's the case, then i um, not sure why this is in here twice. Should be able to get rid of that, I believe. But if that is the case, then we want to say that the brute forcing is successful. The username is going to be self.username. And the password is the you know, password that we use there. And then we set self.found equal to true. And that will break us out of this while loop here, right? Because now self.found is now true instead of false. And that will pretty much end the, uh, the script here. So let's go ahead and run it. Now, one thing is it was giving me a bunch of... It, it was working properly, but it was giving me a bunch of errors... And uh, maybe we needed to actually expand on what they had in black in the Black Hat Python book to add some error handling or something like that. Um, not sure what's going on here. Let's just go ahead and say Python three uh, WP Killer dot pi. So if we run that, it will be brute forcing against the Falaraki user. That's the user that we need. To, yeah. So see. It, I keep getting these error messages, though that doesn't break anything. It keeps running. Um, as you'll see here in a second, it will continue on. And uh, pretty quickly, it did find um, Falaraki and that password. And then, yeah, that error, it's, it looks like it's getting some kind of uh, timeout type of error. Um, maybe some error handling could uh, get rid of that from being dumped onto the screen because that does impact the readability of this, but... Here you see right here, brute forcing, successful, username, Falaraki, password, uh, whatever that word is. And I'm going to attempt that one, but uh, yeah. So I'll show you how it performs with my script. I wrote mine as a single-threaded app for now. I could expand that into a multi-processed one. But um, yeah, let me just show you before I even show you the source code so you get an idea. Um, but mine runs pretty much just as fast for this case, at least. If if my, if my the correct password was way down in a long word list, maybe that one would outperform me, but I don't know. You know, multi-threading doesn't really help you too much with speed on Python because of the global interpreter lock, like I was saying. So for this one, you guys can be the judge. Uh, let, me, let me go to the correct directory first. I call this one Dark Shadow. This is one that I'm still, I'm working on it and making it better. I'm going to make it so that you can, uh, it's really full featured. It's basically going to be like a, a Hydra, if you will, but in Python. Um, so if I if I run the script with uh, the help the help flag here, you can see that uh, I've pretty much taken in flags pretty similar to Hydra if you used that before. Uh, it's pretty much like that you know, as far as the syntax of how you run this thing. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to tell it that the user is going to be Falaraki and the password list will be uh, just word list dot text. And I'll say to run it against, um, let's see, what was that URL? This one right here. And uh, yeah, it should be all I need. Let me just uh, clear that out, and I'll run it. So, yeah, 
pretty pretty clean, pretty clean output. I'm using uh, some terminal colors to uh, make it stand out quite a lot. Um, if you've ever used like the P scripts, they make use of this as well. It might be kind of familiar to you. But uh, yeah, access granted for this password here. And uh, yeah, so that's what I have. If you want to take a look at the source code, I mean, you can do a deep dive on the GitHub. But just to give you a quick overview of it, uh, I'm using um, some pretty cool uh, ASCII art here at the top. And uh, yeah, this term color stuff is what's doing all the, the cool coloring, magenta theme. And uh, yeah, I'm just using arg parse and creating my own command line arguments, a little help message as well. But really where the meat and potatoes of this happens is in this bruteforce.py uh, file here. And uh, from this point, right now I'm hard coding it in, but later I'm gonna allow, um, I'm gonna allow it to be more dynamic and take in the user input on what the parameters are, what the, uh, you know, what the site, like, you know, what, what the payload is exactly. But I built out the payload with um, the parameters uh, for this case, uh, later on the users can specify that, like I was saying, and then I'm just making the post request. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm using regular expressions to check for the presence of a. Uh, so yeah, that's the thing. I guess <laughs> now that I mention it, I could use beautiful soup. I'm not even using beautiful soup in this case to check for whether or not the login failed. I'm actually just using regular expressions. So I'm using a regex to. Because every time, if I go here, right, every time I get the wrong password, what it'll say is um, the password you entered for username Falaraki is incorrect, right? The word incorrect appears, right? So what I'm doing is just using regular expressions to check the output to see if the word um, incorrect is in the output. And if it is, then I'm going to... Uh, just print uh, the, the password so we know we attempted that password and we'll have it in red because it failed. And then else, right, if it doesn't see incorrect in the uh, in the response, then we assume that it, that it passed. So we'll say access granted and uh, that'll be in green and I'll even have it, have that little box around it basically, the uh, reverse as it's called in uh, term color. And I will, at that point, basically, I'll just exit out of the program. I, I, I played around with doing some other things here um, to see if, like, there's, like, a multiple matches or things like that. But, yeah, this is still a work in progress. Um, I'm going to add functionality to brute force user names as well down the line. There's a lot I'm going to add to this yet. It's very incomplete, but I'll upload it to my GitHub if you guys are interested in poking around on your own with it, checking it out. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully this video was of help to you guys. If so, be sure to subscribe to the channel and yeah, go out there and create your own stuff. I mean, sometimes you might find the the stuff that you create, the tools you create is actually cooler or better than uh, some of the tools you might even learn how to make in a book like Black Hat Python. So obviously they want to give you the quick overview, right? If you really spend time like making it really nice and really neat and um, really fully featured, it's going to be better than any of these kind of quick scripts here that they show you how to write. So yeah, hopefully this was also inspirational for you guys. And if you want to catch up on the playlist, um, you know, hit the like button and go ahead and check out the videos on the screen right now. Black Hat Python. We've been really far in this series, been having a lot of fun with it. Hope you guys are too. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.